Now in this video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be making two quarts of apple wine using a natural wild yeast starter that I did in the preceding video. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Now to make our apple wine using our wild yeast starter, we need of course two quarts of apple juice, 100% with no preservatives. We need our wild yeast starter that we made earlier. We need one cup of sugar. We need the juice of a quarter of a lemon or one wedge. We need another empty two quart container which is going to act as our secondary fermenter because after about a week or so of our apple juice being in primary, we're going to rack it over into our secondary container. It's going to be helpful to have an airlock. And just to determine how much alcohol we're actually going to produce, or our AVB level, we're going to need a hydrometer and tube. And that's what I'm going to be using to make this apple wine. Okay, now to get this wild yeast apple wine project going. First thing we need to do is that uh, <laughs> we need to open up our jug of, of wine and we need to pour off about a cup and a half in order to make room for this cup of sugar and probably just about half a cup of wine yeast starter. Actually let's make a little bit more room and we can make adjustments. So we're going to pour off about <laughs> under two cups. Next thing we need to do is that we need to get our sugar in there. And let's move that out the way. Let's move this over. And let's go ahead and incorporate our sugar. It's one cup of sugar. And let's go ahead and put our cat bag on. Now, if somebody's thinking, well, you could have just dissolved the sugar beforehand. And yeah, you could have, but because we want to shake it up to incorporate a little bit more oxygen into our juice, which is going to be helpful for, for the yeast early on, while it's in primary, something we do not want to do while it's in secondary, so we just want to incorporate that air and make sure that everything's pretty much dissolved. So a good 30 seconds or more uh, to do it. Go ahead and put up our cap. What's the next thing we want to put in? It's going to be our lemon juice. And the reason why we're putting in lemon juice is that it acts as something called an acid blend, or basically it adds acidity to the wine, which makes it, or gives it a, a brighter taste. It doesn't taste as flat, put it to you that way. So we're gonna go ahead and incorporate our lemon juice, which again, it's only a quarter of a lemon. No need to be precise. And with that having been done, we can now add our wild yeast starter that we did in an earlier video. Still seeing a little foam across the top. So let's go ahead and add that. Now, I could probably do with less than what I'm adding here, which again was about less than half a cup. But this being the first time I've tried this, I want to make sure I've got enough to make it work. Now, of course, you see we've got a fair amount of headspace that we probably want to try and loosen that up or, or remove a little bit of that to bring it closer to the top. You know, let's say about yay high to start with. Now, a couple of ways that we can proceed from here. We could if this is all you've got, take your original cap, tighten it a little bit, then loosen it a little bit so that you can 
still get air coming out or eventually CO2, which is what we're really trying to deal with. And it's tight enough where you don't have to worry about bugs crawling in there, messing up your wine. Now, another thing you can do, if you're planning on doing this more frequently, is that you can take a cap, drill a hole in it. And if you've got an airlock, which is one of these, you can then go ahead and insert your airlock in the hole and then seal it on both sides. And you now have an airlock. And I'm going to zoom this up a little bit so you can see what's going on. You now have made an airlock. Now, a step beyond that is that you can, instead of using a hole drilled in your cap, you can use a bung, which is basically a piece of rubber, or cork, or whatever. And you can go ahead and insert that. And that fits in rather nicely. You can then take your airlock. I'll take this out because I've already got one available. You can then take your airlock and put that in there. And you're now a step closer to becoming more professional in your winemaking endeavors. Now, in case anybody's wondering, I'm going to take this, I'm going to leave that in there. In case anybody's wondering, this is a number six bung. Okay, there's a link to that in the uh, description section of this video. It's an Amazon link. And you can just check it out and see if that's something that you would be interested in. And so far, that is all we need to do to get the process started. But what we still need to do is that we now need to label what we've done. And we need to take a hydrometer reading to find out just basically how much alcohol or how much sugar we've started with. And at the end of the process, how much sugar is left, if anything, to help us determine what our alcohol or alcohol by volume level is going to be. So let me get a hydrometer. All right, now we've got a hydrometer. We can take our wine thief substitute. Everything's been sanitized using our sanitizer of choice currently, which is Star San. If you start with everything properly sanitized, you shouldn't have any problems making your wine. Basically, bacteria that can possibly turn your, your wine into something that is definitely undrinkable. Now, if you've not used a hydrometer before, the more sugar that's in your liquid, the higher this will float. Towards the end of the process, when most of the sugar has been consumed, this will slowly come down to the point where there's no sugar at all. And that's pretty much a hydro what a hydrometer does. There are a number of markers on it, which helps you determine various things. But in our particular case, we're looking at that scale. And it's telling us that we have a reading of 1.082. And that's our starting gravity. And later on in the process, once we've got our final gravity, there's a small formula that helps you determine how much alcohol you've actually produced. I mean, there's a guesstimate on the scale itself, which will help you determine how much alcohol is capable of. But a lot of that depends on the wine yeast as well that you currently use. And since wild yeast is currently not a high volume uh, AVB producer, I'm expecting something in the range of 8 to 10% alcohol by volume. Now, in terms of our airlock, we do need to add some liquid to it so that water levels are about equal. And later on, or very shortly, you'll start seeing bubbles working their way through the airlock on out. And basically, that's CO2 that's being, that's being produced by your yeast as it consumes the sugar as it, as it produces your alcohol. Now, as we did with the Muscadine wine, we want to label our creation. We are making apple wine. And we started it on this date. And our starting gravity 
readings. Wrap this around a little bit. Starting gravity was 1.082. Now, of course, there's still several more months and several more steps that need to be done within the next four or six weeks. Of course, we're going to start racking this or transferring it from one container to another to get it off of that, uh, what will be a fair amount of dead yeast floating, uh, sitting on the bottom. We don't want to give the wine any off flavors, and we'll be doing that several times. Uh, there are steps that you'll have that I'll have in my channel page under playlist under winemaking operations, uh, which describes all of the steps that will be that will follow after this one. But if you've got the patience for it, 12 months now, 12 months from now, uh, you will have a very tasty apple wine. Now, about 24 hours later, if you take a real close look at the airlock, you can see that CO2 is being pushed out. That means fermentation is occurring. If we take a closer look, we can actually see the, the yeast producing all that CO2 in the container. Now, if you like what you see here, click on the subscribe button. Better yet, become a member. Help support this channel so I can continue to do more videos. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.